We're here today to uh, welcome Mike Campbell up from Eagle River. Mike Campbell was our race driver and for many, many years or so, and uh, he redid uh, one of his Formula 3 sleds here, and we want to show that off today to you. And I would just like to say that uh, we were able to bring uh, the sled back home. There was only six of these sleds made, and uh, out of the six of the sleds made, this is the last working Formula 3 snowmobile from the 90s. And for those of you that aren't fans, uh, there was Formula 1 and Formula 3. Uh, Formula 1 was IndyCar uh, type units, and Formula 3 was the NASCAR of it. It's a three-cylinder, triple-pipe, 600cc motor, and uh, they were a spectacle to watch. So um, the sled had to be completely restored, and Mike worked his butt off to do it, to put it back up on its feet and running again, and we're really proud of that. Yeah, and another uh, sidebar to that is is that uh, Champ 440 was in there. Uh, Champ 440 was driven by Mike Campbell and also Formula 3, and we had several other drivers that would, drove Formula 1 for us. Uh, those are all premier days of the snowmobile racing, and Eagle River was quite a spectacle at its time. Uh, welcome to Nielsen Enterprises' uh, new snowmobile museum that we're building here, and uh, we are trying to collect some of our older sleds that we have ridden before or have uh, raced before. And uh, we've got Michael Camel here today, and I have my son Jeff Nielsen here today. We're, we're, uh, we're, we're trying to bring him home. You know, we want him to come home. Um, you know, uh, and we have a lot of uh, rich heritage, not just in snowmobile racing and olive racing. So uh, this is probably one of our proudest reacquisitions, uh, and just uh, we're just really proud to have it back. It was a long journey to try to find the unit, uh, being the last surviving member of the uh, factory Articat built TNS chassis units. One of six from 1995, um, Articat had contacted Ted to see if they would like to add it to the program with Team Valvoline. Um, after we were done racing, it, it went through some shows and then disappeared for a bit. Um, we did source it through a collector, Keith Warning, who was open to the idea of us taking a look at the unit a few years back. and. Um, we got to talking a little bit and Jim and Ted started building the facility down here with Jeff's idea of constructing a new race shop and we needed some units to put in it and I, I thought maybe Keith would be open to the idea of allowing the item to come back home. And after a lengthy process we were able to get the sled about a year ago and uh, start the process of tearing it down and, and rebuilding it. And, and not only that, so first of all, thanks, Keith, uh, for letting the sled come back to um, the original place where it was uh, originally uh, allocated to. But Mike said there was six, but out of the six, this is the last working sixth unit. All the other ones have been either destroyed or taken apart, so this is truly a one-of-a-kind snowmobile, and we got that information from Greg Spaulding, which... Uh, Greg had a lot to do with this uh, motor and the snowmobile, and, um, and uh, at any point in time, Greg, we'd love to have you come by and uh, take a look at it in person. And Joey Hallstrom also was one that oh, I had Joey. spoke to uh, two years ago at the Hall of Fame in St. Germain. Uh, he had mentioned that this would be the last chassis that is complete. So that note, when when uh, when Mike got the snowmobile, it was uh, it was pretty rough. Um, it, it definitely I don't know what some of the people did to it. I owned it along the way. I, I think there was a drag race guy for a while and and all the other stuff. But over the last two or three months, uh, um, the sled has been completely redone, um, and uh, we don't have the original ignition system. Um, that company's gone out of business, but it does have an MSD ignition system on it now. Um, but uh, the Wall Brothers have helped us make parts for it. Uh, thank you also. Uh, we had to refabricate some stuff. Well, you want to tell them some of the stuff that you had to have made for it? Well, yes. Uh, TNS Racing had a, a special suspension underneath the back end with some fiberglass leaf springs. And, and the rear arm had some issues with the idlers that basically somebody had allowed the track to run too loose. And, and it, it uh, tore up that arm, and Terry Wall was nice enough to take some dimensions and, and the uh, original item and, and duplicate it and get the geometry correct for it. 
Uh, he was very patient with that. We, we had two, three attempts on it, but uh, he did an excellent job with that. Uh, we had another A-arm in the front that, not from us, but somebody else had broken something on that, so I wasn't comfortable with, with the weld on it. I didn't like the aesthetics of it, so uh, Terry also reproduced that perfectly for us. Um, Kirk Crum did a great job at Goodwin Performance with uh, rebuilding the shocks. Yeah, thanks, Kirk. Which is a, a different, a unique item that Jeff always gave me a hard time about with, with the uh, the front arm adjuster on there. Here it um, is right here. Yeah, I, I had to mount my gloves on there to make sure we maintain that heritage of constantly turning the knob when I'm driving, which drove Jeff crazy, but uh, I, I thought it made me handle better at times. So the concept behind the knob was, is as you turn the knob in, it would take and lift up the front of the rail to give you more ski pressure. And as you turn the knob out, um, it would lower the rail back down again to give you more track on the ground. So the, but, dri the driver could actually adjust the sled while as he's driving it on the track was one of the main features of it. But one or two turns on that definitely changes the whole handling characteristic of the sled. Because this sled was actually for its time uh, extremely highly engineered with the special rear suspension that they used using fiberglass springs you could tighten them and stiffen them um, to the plates uh, the the a arms have special plates on them that you can take them in and out and change your camber on the sled um, there was a lot of adjustments in the snowmobile so to get it to balance and to get perfect weight transfer in some of the high banks of eagle river and flatter tracks like plymouth it was uh once you got it set in you didn't want to do too much turning in that knob because it could definitely affect the balance of the snowmobile and how it handled coming setting up for the corner and exiting the corner because corner speed was everything the acceleration out of the corner is what really made this sled because when this sled you had that when you grabbed a handful of throttle with this you had to make sure it was pointing straight it was a lot it would it would take a lot out of a driver to do uh get 15 laps on one of these was a workout for sure a lot of the power to weight ratio was amazing. What is the horsepower, Mike, of this sled? Well, I have the dyno sheet that I brought down, Ted, and uh, I believe that was the dyno run that Greg had done prior to Eagle River. Uh, so, if I remember correctly, that that reading would have been in the 165 to 168 range. And that for that time of day and that time of racing, that was a handful. Yes. When you rode this. Yes. Well. The other thing that this sled loved to do too is it loved to eat belts. Uh, there was so much power in that motor and what it did, uh, we, we might have blown a few belts here and there. Uh, quite a few because the foothold is still quite bent up and I didn't want to take that patina away because that was just part of the program. Uh, that was definitely character when yes. it comes to that. For sure. Well, hey, Mike, thanks for bringing it down. You did a great job on it. Looks like uh, we're going to have a great collection here with all the rest of the sleds we got in our garage right here. Uh, with the race museum that we we're uh, creating and uh, we look to bring other sleds and other things back out to you as the viewers and you can take a look at some of the formula one stuff that we've done in the past also thanks ted yeah thank it's, you it's been an honor to uh, be involved in this and have have this sled actually back home and the only other thing i'd like to add to it i think i'd like to thank all the sponsors that helped make this possible uh, with uh, joined forces with us. Uh, we were a privateer team that teamed up and went against the manufacturers and were able to bring some trophies home and make our mark in racing uh, at Eagle River and all the other tracks uh, that we raced at, uh, part of our settings that we could come home with a winning trophy.